Oh my days, it has landed and today we are unboxing Hellboy the board game. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay and you are at the Top Table Gaming YouTube channel. If it's your first time here, have a look around, check out the rest of the content and if you like what you see, give this video a like and hit the subscribe button and it helps us out. You may have noticed by now but I am very excited today and that's because we're doing an unboxing I have been waiting so long to get my hands on. We are unboxing Hellboy the Board Game by Needy Cat Games and Mantic and Whoa, I don't think unboxing is the right word. This thing is literally heavy to hold here. That is a box and then some. We have got our Kickstarters of Hellboy the Board Game and we cannot wait to dive into this. So, as per most of our unboxings, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the camera. I'm going to fly through all the bits as it comes. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to break things down a little bit further. We're going to take some time, go through all of the individual components and have a bit more of a chat. And then we'll have a recap at the end. Sound good? Before we get stuck in, let's talk a little bit more about the game. So this is a fully cooperative game for one to four players. In this game, you take the role of one of the agents for the Bureau of Paranormal Research and Development. I'm going to call it BPRD though. And in this game, you are investigating the threats that threaten planet Earth. You get to explore amazing gothic locations, search for clues, and take on some big baddies. Who's not going to love that, right? And of course, in this game, you get to take control of some of the iconic characters from the comic books and the movies. You can play as Hellboy, Abe Sapien, Johan Kraus or Liz Sherman. Quick overview aside, without further ado, let's dive straight in and take a look at the box. This box is ridiculous. It is huge and that is a testament to how well the project done and all the really cool add-ons and stretch goals that we've got in this bad boy being the Kickstarter edition. And of course we've got this beautiful artwork which is exclusive to the Kickstarter version of the game and it shows your main protagonist and some of the big griblies and we've got that lovely beautiful artwork there this is stunning so as always with our unboxing guys all i've done is i've took the cellophane off i'm not going to lie i've peeked at the top stuff but we are diving into this together we're going to do this together so without further ado we're going to fly through the content super quick and then i'm going to break it all down for you and we're going to look at the components one at a time and see what we think so let's get in we're going to break open the box <laughs> Ooh. Boom. Straight away we are met with, let's have a look. So we got some of the character cards there. Absolutely beautiful. These are gorgeous. We got some art prints as well. Beautiful. We got a nice, oh man, that is cool. So we got a gorgeous black and white one there. And have some fun. I'm going to colour that in my little boy because that's the sort of stuff we do. You've then of course got some leaflets for some other games like Dungeon Saga and Star Saga of course hitting the other Dungeon Crawler games. For those of you who are finding out about Mantic Games, excellent excellent range by grabbing Hellboy. Then we've got a tutorial booklet. Read this first. I love stuff like this so it gives you a breakdown of how to set up the game. Beautiful full colour how to play the game. Uh, and all that sort of stuff. So that's going to teach you how to play the game in its simplest form before you get excited and start ripping things open. And then of course we've got the rule book. It is a nice A5 full colour rule book. I love my rule books. Um, and this covers everything from basic principles, playing the game, additional rules, the confrontation, preparing to play and set up. And of course the thing every rule book needs which is a rule reference on the back. But remember we're going to have a look through these in a bit more detail soon. Wowzers, okay, so now we've got a big old tray, oh, there's cool stuff under there, but now we've got a big old tray, and we've got the BPRAD case files, which are sealed, which is cool, we'll get to, we've got the archives ones, which are an add-on, and then we've got your deck of doom, some tokens, some base rings, and some of the other cards for the event decks, that is a lot of stuff, we're going to dive into that later for now, to make my life easier, it's staying in there, I'm afraid, oh, Board tiles, oh we can see miniatures, we can see miniatures, but board tiles, and wow is there a lot. And I've got to say, the, the matte finish and the beautiful design on these is just, oh, love it. We've got some tokens as well, of course. These are gorgeous, we're going to check them out soon. 
Oh, we're here. We made it, guys. We've got miniatures. And boy, is there a lot of miniatures in here. So the first tray... Okay, so we recognise some of these people. we got... There's the main man. Boom! We're going to take a look at him. We've got some of your main characters. we got the marker. Um, mini bus for them there as well. Look at the Medusa. Absolutely beautiful models. Now these look very much akin to models that I will have raved about more than once before, which is... Mantic um, All Out War hard plastic one piece models, gorgeous, and these look like they could have leveled up, and I think Mantic already do some of the best hard plastic miniatures out there. Oh, they want me to paint them so bad. So we got that one. Doesn't stop yet. <clears throat> Second tray. Oh, we got fishmen. We've got lots of fishmen. Dice, lots of dice. We got some of the scenery pieces, tokens, flame markers. <clears throat> Still not done. This thing is jam packed with models, guys. Oh, all the painting's scaring me already. No. Oh, there we go. Boom. We've got some absolutely gorgeous models there. Don't forget, we are going to show you these later. That's three tiers of models right now. One, two, three. And then four. Whew. Never ending. Here's where you got all the beasties. You've got wolves, werewolves. Bats, oh so good, so good. I'm gonna have to count how many miniatures are in this set and then, last but by no means least, we got the big gribblies. Check those out. Oh. And then, I say that's it, but that box is full, full, full of goodness. And of course, now it's not so heavy, I can show you the back of the box which of course gives you a very brief paragraph about the game. Become a member of the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense, BPRD, ready to investigate occult threats that threaten our existence, explore the locations, hunt down clues, discover artifacts, fight horrific creatures, and face off against terrifying bosses, straight from the pages of the comics. Boom, and then it gives you a breakdown of what's in here. We've got over 100 miniatures, including Kickstarter exclusive models, 26 dice, 16 double-sided room tiles, 160 cards, over 120 tokens, encounters, quick start guide, rule book, conquer a worm expansion, BPR, BPRD archives expansion, Kickstarter exclusive cards, upgraded plastic counters, and the Kickstarter exclusive art prints. And then you can kind of see a mock up of a game being played, but fear not. If you want to see games being played, you check out our channel soon. So, that, guys, is the speed unboxing. What say we slow this down and look at the parts one by one? Let's do it! I know, I know, you guys want to see the miniatures, but we're saving that bad boy to last because I want to get this recorded and I'm going to be savouring that moment with you. But let's start with the box. First thing we hit as we open the box and something that's all really, always really important. And we got two here. So we start, we get a tutorial one first, which tells you all about the case file deck and the HQ board, um, the different agent cards, the deck of Doom, the encounter deck and everything you need to play the game. Also gives you a small mission to set up to start the game. And then it effectively talks you through it step by step, even showing you how dice rolls interact with your player cards and things like that. So you can really start to understand the base mechanics of the game, which I absolutely love. Talks you right through it, and then it's like, okay, crack on. And then we've got the full rule book. This baby's beautiful. Loving the artwork that mirrors the box on the front. And then this one's going to go into it a little bit more. Of course, you start with an index and the contents and things like that, and then you get a shot of all the components. Um, basic principles, the HQ board, all that stuff, how the cards work, how your basic principles of the game work, and then how to play the game. All there. Beautiful artwork laced all the way through it. Really engaging book. Love the full colour, love the size. And then, of course, you get to the end, and it tells you about game setup. And then, of course, the most important part of any rulebook is the rules reference on the back because, one, I need that bad boy, and two, it just makes playing this game straight out of the box so much easier and you've got a reference point without flicking through a book because we're all there to have fun and not read, right? So those guys are the assets. Let's next have a look at some of the card decks. Okay, guys, so here are some of the very important card... Um, <clears throat> ah! All right, so here are some of the very important card components to this game. And these three are what make the game sing and give it a really unique element. We've got the BPRD case files, the encounters, and the deck of doom. Let's start with the case files. 
Okay guys, so we've got one of the BPRD case files in front of you and these are what set the theme for your scenarios you're going to play through and there's six in the box and I did break this one open for you lucky people I'm not reading it, I promise but they come sealed so the first time you play these you literally open it as you set up and you get a super surprise experience so these guys are, these are basically all the missions and you learn the mission and the objective of your playthrough from reading the BPRD case file this is what's going to set the scene for your game ahead and give you hints about the stuff that you might even encounter. Uh, the contents of each of these is absolutely top secret. So the first time you go into these missions, you have no idea what's coming, which I absolutely love. So these case files are an absolute, a really interesting thing. So I can't show you because I want to play this mission. But you literally are only allowed to look at the top card and you can't see what's underneath it. Until you either achieve the objective that it states on the card or the effect happens. So literally... They keep the um, they keep the momentum going and they keep the game really interesting and dynamic in the way it grows. So there are so potentially on the back of the card you could flip it over and there could be a hidden passageway. You just don't know until you play through these case files, which I think is absolutely genius. Um, and these, of course, live on the HQ board. Of course, at the end of every one of these case files is when you hit the confrontation, and that means it's you guys taking on the big gribbly, the big boss of the scenario. And you don't always know, or you won't always be able to guess which one that is, which I think is really cool. Next up is the encounter deck, and the encounter deck are what are played face down on your room tiles, and when you enter an unexplored room, these flip and tell you what's inside, be it scenery, be it clues, be it enemies. You just don't know, and one good thing is, that is a big old deck, and that's not all of it. So these are what keep the game really fresh and give you the replayability, and you just don't know. There are things like requisition cards, and then, of course, look, there you see. So that shows, because some of the room tiles are split into quadrants. So that's like, there's a frog swarm in one, a minion C in two, minion A in three, and a clue in section four. And these are what dungeon crawler players will be very... Uh, familiar with, I think it's fair to say these are what dictate what's going on in the rooms and all the different things like that. And these add a level to games which I absolutely love. And I love that moment of suspense when you flip it and you're like, oh, what's in the room? So, gotta love it. And then the third deck, which is a key to making Hellboy run, which we're going to show you now, is the Deck of Doom. So, the third deck is the Deck of Doom. And of course, the engine behind Hellboy is the case file, which sets out the overarching mission. You've then got the encounter cards, which is the randomized shenanigans that goes on within. And then the third is the deck of doom. So this deck is the thing that throws in all the unexpected twists and turns that you guys who love playing these types of games and love the Hellboy comics will have grown to love and expect. Now this comes as a base deck, but then case file specific, you also add unique cards that you shuffle in for that specific case, which is going to give really add some theme around the case that you're playing as well as even more diversity in the cards so you're not familiarizing what's coming and it just means the replayability is just next level these cards could be anything from hellboy losing his temper and getting angry to seeing liz sherman and the fire inside a rise and get to a very dangerous level there is all manner of things that can go on in this bad boy these can also bring new enemies into play or push the impending doom track which we're going to get to even higher to that climactic end. Considering you're drawing one of these at the end of every round, these are really going to add a sense of tension and pressure pushing the game along, which is really nice. We then, of course, have some of the tokens that come in there. You've got these little bad boys just for marking damage. You've got the base rings to identify which character is which players. And then, of course, you've got these beautiful little cubes. Uh, I do love my little token accessories, um, which will mark your action points that let your things do the things they want to do. Next up is the beautiful, really loving the matte finish on this cardstock, really thick cardstock, but tangent aside, next up is of course the beautiful HQ board, and this is the thing that keeps everything going, and you've of course got your impending doom track alongside your intimating gathered track, and then you've got a slot for your case files, your deck of doom, and your encounter cards and then I'm going to tell you a little bit more about how this works as always with these sort of games and very thematic to Hellboy you don't have all the time in the world and that's what the impending doom track represents and this represents the time you've got before the ritual is completed and the world comes to an end or before the big Gribbly takes ultimate power and this is what keeps the game moving at a wicked pace during the game, certain events are going to move the impending Doom track closer to its inevitable conclusion. The track is moved by cards drawn from the Deck of Doom, where their agents take time and rest, 
or if there's too many frog swarms on the board, these things can all push the impending doom track closer to the end. Dependent on the case file that you're playing, there will be different effects dependent on what happens when you reach the end of the impending doom track. Obviously though, the higher it is, the worse it's probably going to be. On the flip side to the impending doom track, you've got the information gathered track. And what this represents is the clues that you as the BPRD agents have found as you're working through this mission to help you. What these vital pieces of evidence will do will help you identify a weakness on the final threat to make that game much easier. So while playing the game, are you going to be searching for clues so you can be prepared for the final battle? Or probably like I'm going to play it, are you just going to run head first? and try and kill this thing. Learning to balance the difference between the impending doom and taking time to find the clues for the information gathered track is going to be a key part of the game. It's going to make you make, you make some tough choices, but ultimately it's going to be the difference between victory and defeat. Next up we have a selection of the board tiles and again the card stack on these is fantastic and I really love the art style as well as the matte finish and these are all double sided and some of the themes on these are just absolutely gorgeous. How can you not love that, right? These are absolutely beautiful, and you've got a ton of these in the set as alongside a load of counters for things like doors and different status effects and the ability to mark different areas. The cardstock in here is beautiful. I'm not going to pop it all out because I do want to get this film for you guys today, but I've got to say, as far as cardstock in board games go, nailed it. And just look at the design hats off all round so far on this product looks beautiful and the good thing is when it looks good it becomes more immersive and we all have more fun and that is why we play games right so we're getting very close to getting you guys on the miniatures but first we're gonna have a quick look at the character cards and a little chat about how they work and here we have the character cards and boy are they beautiful and of course of course i'm gonna show you hellboy now let me talk you and you go understand i've had a quick read of the rules i'm not fully familiar with the anatomy of the game yet but I'm going to talk you through my understanding of how the cards work and of course you can watch our battle reports that are coming soon and make probably tell us where we got it all wrong in this video but we don't care I'm opening new toys today I'm having fun so of course we've done Hellboy again they've got that really beautiful matte finish really stylistic just aesthetically everything is beautiful and I can stop saying that now anyway so the first thing we see on the card are the skills and these are, of course, the, the fight, the shoot, the examine, and the defend. Now, you'll notice they are different colours. We've obviously got red, yellow, and orange. And those correspond to the dice that you're going to roll when making the checks. If it's a fight check, Hellboy's going to be throwing red. Not looked at them yet, but I'm going to guess that's pretty good. Shoot is yellow. Um, and then, of course, his defend and examine is orange. And that's how the stats work for your characters in the game. Next up, we've got the special rules section, which is right here. And these are the special rules unique to your character that are kind of always active. So let's have a look at Hellboys. He's got seen it all before. Once per round, when he spends an action cube to upgrade a test down an examine test for himself or another agent, upgrade two dice instead so it shows that he's a keen investigator. Fire resistant, so he never suffers more than one damage for fire, which is good when Liz Sherman's around. And then, of course, shake it off. When testing fight, you may spend a that result to heal two damage so just shows that he's a tank and while he's in wading in in combat he's actually healing as well which keeps him in the fight longer which just really feels quite thematic to me just here guys you're going to see it may not be coming out on camera but there is a red number 10 in kind of the crosshairs there and that represents his threat level and this is really important at the start of the game because you place them in the target priority for the enemies going off the threat level um, during the enemy phase, the character in first place will be the target of enemy attacks. Thankfully, um, this does change throughout the uh, course of the game. So Hellboy being threat 10, he's probably going to be the initial target, but it shouldn't last. But Hellboy doesn't care. Then over here, you'll see on the right-hand side of the card, we've got your unique actions. And these are things that you can spend action points and do in a turn. And obviously, it shows how many action points they cost. So, for example, for one action point, you can taunt, which moves Hellboy... Um, to the front of the target priority queue so that's when you want him to be the damage sponge and take the hits so he can swing back as well and then we've got big right hook for example for two which is make a fight action if you hit the target suffers three additional damage and is stunned and hurled not a clue how that works yet but boy does it sound cool 
Last but by no means Lee, over in the bottom right corner you've got the starting cards which for him are Hellboy's Pistol and Deep Pockets. So that's the equipment they start with but you can also spend funding to give them further equipment to actually customise your character to your own playstyle. Now the, the core game has got the four main protagonists which we talked about but due to Kickstarter extras and stuff I count 14 character cards for this game which is just an insane amount. So not only do things like the Deck of Doom and the Encounter Deck keep playing the same case file feel varied and different but then you can hit it with such a whole host of characters and sometimes you might just charge forward for the encounter at the end sometimes you might want to find the clues like the replayability here just feels absolutely immense whoops that's not all you've of course got these shaded red squares here which represent damage okay i cannot stall any longer it's time to look at the minis and just to give you kind of an idea on the scale is I've had to prop my tripod up higher just to try and get all of this in shot and you are actually missing the bottom row here which is four more fishmen, some more flame markers and some more dogs as well as the head of this big bad boy but I'm going to give you a look at these minis and I'm so excited because I haven't touched any of these yet I've just had to break the cellophane off each of the layers and the plastic covers for them holy smokes are there some beautiful models in here all right, so I reckon <laughs> I'm a bit overwhelmed by all this. There is so not including the uh, like the flame markers and the 3D terrain and these things. There's like 112-ish models, bonkers. Like I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna paint all these, although. I do manage to get through it quite quick. My thinking actually is um, all the characters are going to get painted and then all the bodies are just going to get kind of Xenothal highlighted, so black and then a colour from above, just so we can get them on the table quickly and it pops and it makes it really distinguishable. And these models, even if you just pick out a little bit of detail, look absolutely beautiful, but we need to dive in. I need to dive in. I'm dying standing here. And I think the best place to start, let's start with the four main protagonist and of course the first one I'm going to reach for and probably get right in the way of camera is Hellboy so let's have a look at this big bad man oh my days this guy is stunning that is classic what a beautiful model and again uh, having them in the hand now is very much like the all-out war stuff which I love and of course he's in his iconic trench coat with his pistol and he just looks ready to rock. Beautiful. Next up, I suppose, after him, we've got to look at Liz Sherman, right? And there she is, looking gorgeous. Really beautiful model. The detail on her face is great, obviously. Her hand is looking a bit hot. But again, absolute beautiful detail for these single-piece models. Johan Krauss there, again, just beautiful. Love, just check out the logo. Is it coming out for you there? Yeah, look at the level of detail. One thing I always love about these models, if you base coat and wash these, all that detail will pop, and you can be pretty much there. Those of you who've seen my All Out War stuff know that's pretty much what I've done there, and I think it looks all right, to be honest. And then, of course, we finish off with, we've got Abe Sapien there. Just looking cool as ever. Now, let's have a bit of another look. So I'm just going to have a dig through at this point. Oh, we got the baby Hellboy. So again, we're looking at some of the Kickstarter exclusive sculpts now. Absolutely love that. Really cool. What else we got going on? Now, we've got to look at this guy because, of course, it is the baddie, which is Rasputin. Uh, absolutely gorgeous model. Really cool pose as well. I think that just looks insane. Look at that. <clears throat> Beautiful. Going to look amazing on the tabletop. And we'll pop him back there for now. Just, oh, look at this guy. That is beautiful. Look at that. Can you guys see that okay? There we go. Just absolutely stunning. Stunning. Oh, yes. Gorgeous models, absolutely gorgeous models. Then let's have a look at some of the bigger stuff because, of course, we've got plenty of. We'll grab a couple of these. We've got the Fishmen, which are some of your more generic 
baddies. Again, it ain't just the characters that look good. The detail on these is great. And I hopefully it's showing even like, even the sticks have got the wood grain and stuff in. These are going to paint up a dream. But then let's have a look at some of the big stuff. So of course we're going to go full Cthulhu. Have a look at the giant frog monster. So when you mess up with a frogman, this guy comes. Um, and I can say we have been lucky enough to paint one of these as part of the uh, Artist Opus Series D project I'm involved in. And boy does it paint a dream. A dry brush makes this bad boy look incredible. Look at him. <clears throat> and then I am reading the name. Uh, not the biggest Hellboy fan, although I do enjoy it. And we've got the tentacles of Sadhu Hem. Check that out. How fun is that going to be? You can even see like the ruins in there. Absolutely gorgeous. These miniatures are just insane. And as I'm kind of looking round, I'm blown away. These are cute as well. There is uh, 10 of these. We've got the little frog swarms, which is really cute and cool. I love those. Uh, and then what else we got? There is just <laughs> a little bit overwhelmed. We've got these flame markers. When Liz Sherman sets all sorts of stuff on fire. These are beautiful in like a, a coloured acrylic of some sort or resin. Really nice. And then let's have a look in here. So in here you get some of the um, basically like chests and stuff. It's basically 3D scenery. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. There's all sorts. And this stuff really just adds to the level of immersiveness on the table that we got here. We got a dead guy, quite cool actually. Um, and then we can dive into some of the more uh, of the generic dudes. So we've got obviously we've got lots of beasties like werewolves. And check those out. Come on, so cool, so so cool. Um, yep, absolutely insane. I am blown away by this set. And then we're going to wrap it up with this guy. Because I think he's hilarious. And I'm probably going to paint him first. Oh, come on. And as you can see in front of you, just an astronomical amount of absolutely beautiful miniatures in this set. And I can't wait to have a play with these. And that's it, guys. We've been through the box top to bottom. We've had a quick look. We've had a closer look. What do you think? Let us know below. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to switch the camera around. You're going to have to look at me again. Okay, guys, that is it. We have just managed to dive through the enormous astronomical incredible Hellboy the board game by obviously Needy Cat Games and Mantic Games thank you so much for creating this product and I've got to say um, I do a lot of unboxings and stuff also those of you who know me know I've got a huge case of shiny toy syndrome so I unbox a lot of stuff that I buy and I actually felt a little bit overwhelmed by this and that is in an absolute good way because there's just such a sheer amount of stuff in here it's incredible and hats off to everybody involved in this project it is insanely good. The quality of all the products is great. I really love um, how some of the overarching mechanics sound like they play. The fact that a lot of the missions are secret, yet you've got kind of an infinity deck in there separately so you can build anything down to the quality of the cards, the quality of the tiles, the artwork is just insane. Like it truly is. I totally dig it. And then the miniatures, like the clip I've just recorded for miniatures, apparently if I'm, apologies if I'm bumbling because I was a little bit blown away by exactly how much there is and it's just astronomical and this game just screams how much replayability it's got in range of miniatures, in what can happen in game due to things like the deck of doom and the encounter deck down to the case files, like this game is one that's going to stick with you for such a long time and boy am I glad I got it at Kickstarter, so hats off to all involved and I'm giving this game a massive two thumbs up because it's just insane and I can't wait to dive into this further. So if you enjoyed this video do let us know. Let us know what you think about Hellboy the Kickstarter in the comments below. Have you got it coming? Are you waiting for it? Are you going to pick it up at retail maybe? And what content would you like to see on Hellboy the Game? Do let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I can't wait to now go away and paint and break out some of this stuff. But as always guys I've been Jane. This is Top Table Gaming. If it's your first time here, have a look around, check out the rest of the content, give us a like if you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe if you want to see some more, and until the next video guys, enjoy your gaming, whatever it may be, and we'll see you soon. Cheers!